got several knives here I'm going to be putting up for sale. Um, decided to do a video because I think this is the easiest way to do it and the best way to get a look at what you're actually getting. As you can see, there's a wide variety of stuff we're going to be looking at. I'll go ahead and start in the back corner and work our way forward. Um, first thing we've got is a zero tolerance. 0350OR. This was an exclusive from Knife Center with the orange G10 scales. Uh, I don't think there's. I don't think these are overly common. I bought this secondhand. I've never carried or used it. It doesn't look like it's really seen much carrier use. Um, the biggest thing you're going to notice is there's a spot on the blade here, a little dark spot. It's not like orange rust or anything. It's been there as long as I've had it. A little bit of black discoloration up there. Um, it hasn't gotten any worse or anything. I, I really don't know what it is, but that's the thing that's probably going to jump out the most with this knife. Um, otherwise, let's kind of take a look around it. Take a look at the scales. Back here. There's some faint black marks just in the G10. Uh, orange G10 tends to kind of do that. It gets a little dirty. Since it's so bright, you can easily see like oils and stuff from the hands that show up on it. Here are the markings. Uh, serial number 0962, and you can see that matches the box too. It does come with the factory box. Uh, the edge on this thing, I would say is factory. I don't feel any chips, dings, rolls, anything like that with it. Uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at the centering and the lockup. Here's the lockup on your liner. And the centering seems to be pretty much spot on. Uh, this is a spring-assisted knife, and the action on it is is fine. It's, it feels just like all the other 350s I've had. So, nice knife that's not too common. If you're looking for something for your ZT collection, it does have the factory box, as we saw the serial number matches. Uh, it's got the 350OR there, or G10. Up next, we have another Zero Tolerance, and this is a pretty nice package if you're looking for a nice knife to carry. Um, this is a Zero Tolerance 0609, um, and I bought this in a package deal. I've never carried or used it. The previous owner, you, you may have noticed right away, put an, an edge on it, an aftermarket edge. Um, I can't remember what system he said he used. It's a very nice edge. As you can see, it's, it's mirror polished. I don't feel any defects, chip stings, rolls, anything like that. Um, and really, I, I can't find much else to point out on this knife um, as far as, you know, wear or anything. So I don't think he carried it. I've never carried it. It's a very nice knife. It's a very pretty uh, frame lock from Zero Tolerance. I think it's a good size uh, for the amount of blade that you're getting with the knife. Oops. I think it'd be a nice one if you're looking for a decent sized knife to carry. And like I said, just not, not really much to point out on this one. Uh, we'll take a look at the lockup and centering on it. Centering looks to be spot on. And this one is also nice because it comes with some extras. So you might have noticed the proprietary pivot on this knife if you're not familiar with it. Um, this does come with the pivot tool for that. These are held together by a magnet and these will go on either side of your pivot so you can adjust it. It does have the box for the pivot tool from Kershaw. And then it also comes with an MXG gear uh, deep carry pocket clip if, if you're into deep carry pocket clips. It does include that as well, as well as the factory box and paperwork. Let's see here. So that's a nice little package. Um, if you're looking for a, a nice ZT, if you're into flippers and bearing pivots and all that, um, I think this will be a nice little package for you. Next up, we've got a couple of bench maids. Uh, first is an 860 Bedlam. This is a really neat knife. It's big. It's a large folder. Um, I bought this. I had two of them, and I just I never carry them because they are so large. I have a medium sized hand, and you can see the handle is just huge. So even folded, this is going to take up a lot of pocket space. Uh, really neat design. 
Um, but it's just, it's not something I'm carrying or anything. So I think I'm going to put it up for sale. I don't have a lot to point out on this. I did send both my bedlams back to Benchmade after I got them because the centering was really bad on both of them uh, to where it was, if, if you didn't have to pivot down pretty tight, it was gonna rub the liner. Uh, Benchmade did fix that on both. So the centering on this is spot on now. And it's got, um, it doesn't have any like blade play or anything. Um, of course you, you can adjust your pivot for that kind of stuff, however you like it. Uh, yeah, there's not, there's just not a lot to point out on this. I, I'm going to call this one um, probably a light user. Uh, I don't know. Since I bought it secondhand, I really don't know what it saw before me. But uh, the edge, it feels like a standard Benchmade factory edge. They, they are a little bit toothy from the factory, uh, but I don't feel any defects like chips, rolls, dings, anything like that. Uh, we took a look at the centering. Of course, it's an access lock, so we can't look at the lockup on it. And you'll see on the black coated liners and stuff, you'll you'll see some little white marks, and you'll see that stuff from the factory on this on this kind of um, finish on these knives. But not really much to point out on this one. One fifty four cm blade steel there. It does come with the factory box, the little Benchmade baggy, 1960 bedlam, the paperwork there. That baggie's too small for this knife too. I don't know if they made a bigger one, but that's the one that came with it when I got it. Uh, the second Benchmade we have is a 9170 BK Orange. This is an auto triage. So if you're not familiar with the triage, um, this has a safety hook in the back. Uh, they have a manual and an auto version. I have both, and I just I never carry the auto. Um, this one I bought this second hand. Um, we'll take a look at the centering. Centering looks spot on on this guy. Uh, everything works very well on the knife. Uh, safety hook flips open very readily. Take a look at the. So to actuate the uh, uh, Benchmade Axis Lock Autos, you just pull back on the Axis Bar. There is a lock to it as well. We can see right here the switch. So if you push that forward, it keeps the Axis Bar from, from coming back. So it's locked. So flip that back and then there you go. It's got good action on it. I'll kind of take a look around it. This is N690 blade steel. And you can see this has a, what I would say is a factory Benchmade edge, that kind of toothiness like I talked about before, but I don't feel any defects. It actually feels pretty sharp. Uh, no rolls, dings, chips, anything like that. Um, these are aluminum black coated anodized handles with G10, orange G10 inserts, and then the blade is coated. I don't see anything. I mean, you're, you may, you're gonna see some white dust speckles and stuff, and you may see some wear in the black coating along the edges very common for this stuff, but it's very, very minimal. Um, I would say this from the factory, this is the kind of stuff you, you would see even from this. So blade looks good. And just like I mentioned with that uh, zero tolerance, you'll see some black on the G10. Uh, this will probably clean off, but orange G10 seems to uh, get that dirty appearance pretty easily deep carry pocket clip there is a little mark right there I would say this is the clip is where you're gonna find the most marks on this knife uh, right there and then up on the edges here because these aren't the oxide coated this is like a painted or something bench made clip I like the oxide coated ones more but a glass breaker on the back there Neat knife, if you're looking for an auto uh, triage, there's a little mark right there on the black anodizing on the scale. Uh, and it does come as well with the uh, factory box. See the info there and the little black baggie and the paperwork. 
Okay, next up we've got uh, a couple of traditionals that we'll look at. Uh, the first one, I got this in a, in a lot. Um, I bought a bunch of little traditional knives and this was one of them that was included. I really don't know much about it. It's a Colonel Coon, one of 100. Um, I'm just gonna take a look around it. It has um, uh, wood scales. I'm not really sure. I'll take a look at the box. It does come with the box. So there's the information about it. Made in the US. I guess maybe that was the price when it was new, 130 bucks, well, if that's correct. Um, it's in good shape. I really don't see much to point out on it. There's a little bit of hazing on the bolster here. Um, I don't know if you can kind of see it there right in the middle. There's some hazing on there on the back. But I don't know if this is, you know, a collectible type of thing, if, if, if people know more about traditionals than I do. Uh, but it's in very good shape. I, I wouldn't really point much out on it. Um, blade edge on that one seems very good. No markings on this side. Might be, yeah, there are some marks just on the bolster there. Um, so you can see those pretty well. got a pretty good walk and talk um, as it opens and closes good snap both at the half stop and the open and closed positions so here's uh, the spay blade I think that's what this is called it's kind of a, like a mini trapper design and there you can see markings on the blade tang there but neat little knife if, if you're looking for a pocket knife or maybe a, if this is a collectible of some kind I just I just don't really know that much about it There's the center on the blades. Looks pretty good, just looking at it off camera. This uh, spear point may, may uh, kind of get close, or uh, favor this side of the liner over here a little bit, but pretty little knife. Got a couple other traditionals here from Lion Steel. Um, first one we have, this one does come with the factory box. Oops. And this is the um, nat, which is Tonto backwards because this is a reverse Tonto blade. Kind of clever, I guess. Uh, this one has natural micarta scales on it. I bought a couple of these, one in ram's horn and then this one, and I'm gonna sell this one. I just wanted to keep one. Um, I have not carried or used this one. It's in very good shape. I mean, really looks new. Um, I, there's really just not anything to point out on it. The blade is, is very, very sharp. Uh, this is M390 blade steel from, uh, this is a collector knives is who kind of coordinated these and they did all kind. There, there'll be another one back here, all different kinds of knives and stuff with lion steel that they did. Um, any marks you're seeing on the blade is just oil and fingers. It's not much to point out on this one. It's a, it's a really, it's a, it's a nice size traditional knife. Um, fits my medium size hand very, very well. Uh, little walk and talk spring action on it's very good it has a half stop uh, this is a factory lanyard that's on this thing this little leather deal if I can get it to focus there we go that is factory and while we're here take a look at the centering which seems to be spot on um, nice little knife it's just uh, I'm just gonna keep one I'm gonna keep the ram horn I don't think we already looked at the box but their collector knives and the model number and I think that is a natural canvas is what the NC stands for. Uh, next one we have is also a Lion Steel collector knives collaboration. This is the Shuffler uh, traditional knife. It has titanium bolsters, M390. This was also natural uh, canvas, natural micarta. Um, and this is, their first one of these had a really reddish hue to it. And so of course this one does. Um, this one, I have carried and used this one, um, so I'm going to call it a light user. Uh, the edge on it is very nice. I don't feel any chips, dings, anything like that. Now, the centering on this one is a little off, as you can see. It favors the side, and you'll also notice some black marks on the back of the, of the blade there. Ah, come here. 
that was on there from the factory. So you can see that stuff there. Now, um, another thing about this, I had this knife, I sent this off to get custom copper scales made for it. Uh, and I have several of these type of knives around head and the dom. And I ended up putting those scales on another knife. And when I went to put the factory scales back on this one, I could not get the threads to engage um, into the liners. So what I ended up having to do was kind of drill the, the counter um, sinks a little bit deeper on here to get the screws to engage in the liner. And it's fine now, but what you might notice is um, that the screws may sit a little deeper into the scales than some other ones, or even they may not quite be evenly deep there. So I, you're never gonna notice it if you're getting this for a user. I, I don't think, I mean, you're not, you're not gonna notice anything. Um, or if you're looking to maybe get a knife to work on custom scales or something, this would be a good candidate too. Um, I really don't know why that happened, but it did. So I just wanna make you aware of that. Um, and on the back of one of the scales, it may be a little bit messed up from where it was drilled. Uh, but if you don't take it off, you're never gonna see that either. Um, but I'm probably gonna price this one pretty well just due to that stuff. But this would be a good user if you're looking for one of these lion steel slip joints. Um, just be aware of that stuff I mentioned. Uh, but it's it's really not a, a big deal function, function wise. Uh, good walk and talk on this one, half stop good spring action. Uh, so we'll continue on with the traditionals down here. I've got a couple from Great Eastern. Uh, the first one is going to be this uh, Model 35 Green Banana Bone. You can see the front of the tube. These have 1095 carbon steel blades. I bought this um, new. I think I bought this one new on eBay and uh, I've never carried or used it. I bought these just because I liked the little banana insignia, but I have something else with it, so I'm gonna let this one go. Uh, really nothing to point out on this. I, I would say that it's like new. I, I just haven't noticed anything. Um, on these shiny bolsters, you know, you may see some hazing or, or whatnot just from handling, but nothing much to point out. Walk and talk on this one is pretty good. The springs aren't too stiff, aren't too soft. Focus on both blades. There is some, uh, there's like a black mark there, which was on there from when I got it. There you can see the model number. Uh, those model numbers, so the 35, that's the model, uh, the 35 Churchill, I think this is. Um, and then I think the one denotes the main blade shape. And then two means it has two blades, and then 17 was a year that it was made, so 2017. Just, just not much to point out on this. Um, I've got several from Great Eastern, and a lot of these marks are seen on the blade are just oils and stuff. But um, you know, there you'll always see some of these like blackish marks on the on the blades and, and stuff. Some hazing on the shiny bolsters, but it's a pretty knife. It's a nice one. I, these, I, all these great Easterns seem to be really collectible. Of course, we'll take a look at the blades where they sit in the knife. Neat collectible knife. Uh, it does come with the, with the factory tube there. And the other great Eastern that we've got is a 43 beaver tail. Uh, as you can see, model 43, uh, the blade shape, one blade, and then 2018, jigged Brazilian cherry wood is what the scales are. This will come with the tube, and it also came with this uh, number 43 Oregon Trapper um, pin, button, whatever. I bought this one, once again, because I like the beaver shield, but I have a, I have a pair of 85s, one with banana and one with beaver shield, so I'm just going to keep those and move these along. I bought this... Um, new i think i got this one on ebay or maybe blade forms or something um i guess no i if i got on i think i did get this one on blade forms so it would have been second hand um but the guy said he never used it and i don't see any signs of use take a look at the blade centering it favors this side just a little bit but there's really not much to point out on this thing good good spring action walk and talk on it 
bad. You can see the little black marks like I was talking about down there below the etching. And then we got some fingerprints that seem to be ever present on these things. I'm not wearing white gloves for these. Um, bolsters look pretty good. There is some hazing on them. Oh, this was a, uh, this PPP emblem, this stands for uh, pre-production prototype. And there's your markings there, but yeah, not much to point out on this guy. Neat little knife. I, I like these different weird um, em or, uh, shields that they do on them. Okay, moving along. Uh, we'll go ahead and go down to this one too. This is a TM Hunt Little Billy Bad Axe. It's a little tiny like keychain tool. Uh, this is made from 01 tool steel. Uh, it has uh, canvas micarta scales on it. I bought this new from USA Made Blades. I've never carried or used it. Um, I just thought it was kind of neat. Um, you will see some little black and all this, all these black marks. Some of it's just from the sheath, but that there is not. Um, it, uh, excuse me, I bought this new and it, it came like that. Uh, it is a tool steel, so, you know, you, if you're carrying it, you'll want to, you know, make sure that you wipe it down. Uh, don't let sweat and moisture sit on it. Neat little knife, and you'll see some rub on the, I'm not sure exactly what the finish is that he's put on it, but you'll see some rub marks from where it goes in and out of the Kydex sheath. Um, this is all that's included is just this and the sheath. I don't, I think maybe it came in a plastic bag or something. Sheath retention is very good. Um... And then you just kind of push this tab out of the way and it pulls out. Very sharp. Very, very sharp. So with that little guy, not much to show on that. Um, next one we'll go to is definitely not a traditional knife. This is a G&G Hawk Mud Auto. Um, I got this in a trade and I, I really like Hawk design knives. I have several of them. Um, but I also have the manual Hawk, and I'm not a huge auto fan, so I'm going to let this one go. I know I will regret this um, because all these Hawk, the autos and the muds, they're difficult to get, and, and I just know I'm going to regret doing this, but I never carry or use it. I carry and use the manual. Um, I did get this in a trade. It was used. Um, I think, I can't remember if I did anything with the edge. I think I stropped the edge was it. But it's got a very nice edge. I don't feel any defects, chips, dings, rolls, anything like that. Um, now, when I got this knife, what what it did when I opened it, it would open and it would rebound off the stop pin and kind of do this. And then I would have to, you know, fully open the blade with a little wrist flick or something. I sent this back to G&G Hawk because they said, yeah, some of those had a weak spring. So they put a stronger spring in this thing, and now it is, it is solid. So if I pull this switch back and hold it back to where it's not locked open, you can see the blade is, is 180 degrees out there with the handle. If I release that switch, it's locked. Okay. Before, it would not do that. It would rebound back. So now it's it's fixed. G&G Hawk fixed that issue with it. And they did say that that was um, a known issue. There's a centering on the blade. It looks pretty good. Looks dead on really uh the clip looks a little funky it just it raises upwards that's just the way it's designed um so it may be throwing you off with centering or something but that's just the way those are deep carry clip this has carbon fiber scales um, i'm gonna call this a light user and we already kind of took a look at it we'll, we'll walk around it a little bit take a look at the blade See some blackish marks right, right in there. Seems to be almost, this is kind of like a working finish, like on my hinderers, um, and those tend to get some little discolorations in places. There's the back side, G and G Hawk 20 CV steel, very good. I love 20 CV steel. Here you can see a little blackish mark right there in the finish. Edge is very nice on it, like I said. I think I just stropped it, maybe. Or I could be thinking of the manual, um, that I've done some work on that one. But uh, this one, I, I would say you're not going to really notice anything much um, from... Wait a minute, there is... Hold on just a second. Oh, there is a little place. Hold on. 
right in there, there is a little itty bitty tiny place. Let's see if we can get it in focus here. Since this is an expensive knife, I want to make sure you see everything and know what you're getting. Right there it is. There is a little tiny ding right there in the edge. Tiny, tiny thing. I mean, we're talking, that's going to come out with like spider co ultra fine stones or maybe just some stropping or something. But it that is there, so do notice that guy right there. Take a look at the scales. Um, the black coated pieces, you'll notice some white areas, um, all, all these black coated parts on the bench maids and stuff seem to get that. And you'll notice around the edges on the liners, you'll notice some whitish marks here in the back. This probably, I'd say some of the worst areas right here on the liner, if I can get that focus there. Notice that there and there. And on this side too. My fingernail is not catching on that stuff. I think it's just stuff in the finish. Not actually like dropped and dinged up or anything. And there's the uh, lanyard too. You can see some wear on that. Take a good look around this one. I've bought expensive knives and had surprises. There's a little white mark on the liner there. My manual mud is well used. I carry and use that one a lot. It's got lots of little white marks and stuff on the on the black. You can see the uh, Hawk logo there. So that's that guy. Um, next one we've got is a is a fixed blade. This is a Bradford Guardian Three. I've had several different versions of this, and I'm just paring it down to just one of them now. So I'm going to get rid of this one. Uh, this is. Um, the Warncliffe Blade M390 with the Nimbus finish, and it does have the 3D camo micarta scales. So obviously it comes with the factory box and the uh, paperwork there. And it has the factory sheath, Kydex sheath, and here is the blade, the knife itself. Uh, I love the Nimbus finish on these knives. I think it looks really cool, it's like an aged, black finish, G3 Warney. I love, the, if you are familiar with Bradford's or if you're not, um, so Bradford's, a lot of them come with the 2D G10 scales. I hate those scales. I do not like Bradford G3's with those scales. Um, this one came from the factory with the 3D micarta scales and I always put either the 3D micarta or um, I've got the one that I'm keeping as 3D carbon fiber. Definitely you want those on the knife. It totally changes the way it feels. Uh, so medium sized hand, you can kind of see how that's fitting in there. Um, I have carried and used this one some. Um, I'll leave the lanyard on there I put on. But it's not, the edge feels, it's very sharp. Um, a little bit toothy, kind of like a Benchmade factory edge. Uh, but I don't feel any chips or dings, rolls, anything like that. Uh, one thing you will notice is the heel of the blade right here kind of swoops downwards. I don't know if that's intentional or not from the factory, but it, it does kind of swoop downwards there. Oops. Oh, focus on the knife now. There we go. So just FYI on that. Nice little fixed blade. Um, I just, I've got so many little fixed blades I carry now. I've got a giant mouse GMF-1 is my favorite. So uh, I don't carry my Bradfords like I used to, so I'm just gonna keep it to one. And the last couple items we've got are from Spyderco. This one is a Spyderco McB. Um, I don't know if you see me on the, on the different forums or Facebook groups or on Instagram, but I love the Spyderco McB. I actually have three of them. The other two, um, I put some customized parts on, um, and one of them has been uh, customized by McNeese, who was the designer of the McBee. It has a honeycomb pattern on it. Anyway, let's talk about this knife. <laughs> um, if you're not familiar with the McBee, it is tiny. So there it is in my medium-sized hand. Tiny, tiny little knife. 
Um, and I was really torn on whether or not to get one because I was like, it's so small. What I, I, was, I was actually in the factory outlet store in Golden and I handled it and I'm like, just like, would I ever use that? And then I found some deals on some of them used and, um, and I, try, I think I traded into my first one and really I carry, I always have them be on me and I actually use this more than most of my other folders um, because it is, it, it's really good. It's opening boxes and stuff. The blade shape is nice. Uh, you've got a place to put your finger up here for control. It, this is just a really neat little knife. Um, and the reason I'm getting rid of this one, I have the two others. Um, and I had gotten this one because it came with a stinger backspacer and I wanted it for my other knife. Um, now this one does not come with a factory box. Um, actually it does not have the lanyard tube either. There should be a lanyard tube, but the, uh, stinger backspacer eliminates that. So once I took that backspacer off, the, the lanyard tube wasn't there. So it is just what you see right here. Just the knife, um, XTS, uh, CTS, XHP steel. Um, I bought this secondhand, obviously. I don't know if the other, if the previous owner really carried or used it, but I'm going to call it a light user. The edge on it feels pretty good. I don't feel any defects or anything. I'd say it's a factory edge. And you know, you, you probably will. There's some blackish, um, a little blackish area down there. Um, and you, you may see, you're gonna see some marks and stuff. This, this titan, the titanium scales on here do show like the snail trails and little marks and things pretty easily, but really it's nothing, nothing significant. Just, it's a light user. So expect to see some marks on it. The worst marks you're gonna see are on the clip. Let's see if I can, it's shiny, it's hard to show them. But in here, you'll see some very light scratches in this area. You'll see some, but it's, it's just, it's so hard to make them show up. Just, just be aware that they're going to be there. We can kind of see right there, uh, right there. Yeah. That, that angle there kind of shows them pretty well. Just be aware those are going to be there. In my honest opinion, if you buy a McBee mine or otherwise ditch this clip immediately, go to McNee's website and buy one of the customs that he, I, those clips are so much better. They're shorter, they're titanium. Uh, this clip is very stiff and it's too long for the knife. I never carried this thing um, much until I got the, the McNeese clips on. I think I slipped in the uniform pocket, but I, it was so difficult to get it in and out of the pocket with this clip. Um, so I just carry it loose in one of my shirt pockets, but neat knife. Uh, let's take a look. I've babbled on about it here long enough. Centering is spot on on it. And we'll take a look at the lockup. There's your lockup. And I love all the little details on this. I'm going to yak about it for another second. All the little uh, dimpling that they put on the pivot and the, um, the lock bar there. It's just neat. It's a really neat little knife. If you're on the fence about one, I highly recommend trying one out. And I'll probably price this one pretty decently just because I've been over the box of the lanyard too. Good action on it and everything. It's a nice little knife. Um, the last one we've got here is another spider code. I bought this one at the factory outlet store in Golden. Uh, this is their friction folder. I, I don't know if these are discontinued or not. Uh, it's got VG10 steel. I bought this new from the factory. I've never carried or used it. So I'm going to, I'm going to call it a light user just because I, I'd like to be conservative with my descriptions. But, um, this is a friction lock. If you're not familiar with friction locks, it, or I'm, yeah, it's, it doesn't lock. Okay, that tab that you see there that you use to open the knife or whatever, that's your quote unquote lock. So when you're holding the knife, it's got that giant tang to, to you know, keep it, keep it from moving too much as long as you keep a good grip on it. Um, but yeah, so no lock up to show on it. We'll look at the centering real quick. Centering looks to be spot on. Let me look off camera real quick. I would say centering spot on on it. Um, it will come with everything it came with from the factory. It does have this uh, uh, pocket sheath with a clip, or I guess you could use it as a belt sheath, whatever. And then the uh, factory box as well. Um, like I said, I bought it new, never carried or used it. I'll call it a light user just to be conservative with it. Um, and Edge is factory because I bought it new and have never carried it. So that's as you would receive it from Spyderco. So I think we've covered everything on the table here. Quite a bit of stuff, but uh, hopefully you'll 
find something that might be of interest to you.